Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how I go about running sessions for the youngest recreational players. So let's go! This channel is mainly known for higher level youth soccer teams and how I prepare them to learn the game. But I get requests all the time from especially rec coaches of the younger age groups. U5, U6, U7, kids who aren't quite ready for the current sessions that I have on the channel. And they ask, how would you approach this or how do you approach sessions at the youngest age recreational players? First off, guys, we have to ask ourselves, why is this age group here? Why do these kids want to play soccer? And there's two main reasons. The first is they want to have fun and play with their friends. And the second is they want to score goals. With those two things in mind, this is how I would run a typical session for an hour of U5, U6 recreational soccer. The initial setup begins with two goals on opposite sides of the pitch. In one of the goals, you'll want to put as many soccer balls as you have in them. Now, these soccer balls do not have to be very expensive. They can be worn, they can be used, but you'll want as many balls as possible. Now, these goals do not have to be big. They don't have to be full-size goals. You could have two sets of smaller goals or even just one set of smaller goals, as long as you have all the balls in the goals on one side of the field. As your players arrive to training, they are encouraged to take the ball from one side of the pitch to the other and score goals. This immediately gets the ball at their feet with a lot of touches, dribbling the ball forward and scoring goals. Once they've taken all the balls from the goals on one side of the pitch and scored them in the other, they then repeat this and take the balls to the other side. The coaching points for the warm-up activation are very simple at this age. I'll say things like, hey, get your head up, get your head up while you're dribbling. Or I'll say things like, take little touches, little touches. We don't need to smash the ball. The other thing is to be very positive, even sometimes be a little bit goofy, like, hey, great shot. or or try to defend them in the middle a little bit. Kids love stuff like that, and they really love scoring goals in this scenario. Once the players have done this a few times, there are a couple ways you can progress this. If you have four small goals and have set the goals up like I have shown, the first progression is that they now have to go to the goal directly diagonal to them. This accomplishes two things. First, you've introduced interference, which now they really need to get their head up or they're gonna run into each other. And second, you're introducing the concept of how do I change direction with the ball? If you're working with two goals, whether they be large goals or pug goals, the next progression is to tell the players they have to go zigzag. So they have to change direction with the ball. They can't go in straight lines. So adding a change of direction a little bit, even with zigzags, brings again the concept of how do we change direction with the ball? And I'll just ask them, I'll say, if you have the ball at your feet, how will I change direction? And they'll give a lot of different answers, but the answer is with the inside part of the foot. Now, if you have a particularly bright player, they might say, well, I can change direction with the outside part of my foot. Well, that's also correct. Guys, I also wanna make a quick point about water breaks. Kids at this age need a lot of water breaks. So while I don't have set breaks, you'll see me even have them get water six, seven, eight times in the, in the hour because what you're gonna to wanna to do is focus on short bursts of energy and then rests. The next progression is to set up gates. These are cones that are paired in different orientations. I usually ask the kids to go through three of the gates before shooting on the goal or goals on the other side of the pitch. So now they have to get their head up, look for the gate, as well as use the inside or outside part of the foot to change their direction. The next set of exercises revolves around what I like to call soccer island, which is basically just a circle of cones that's set up as you can see here. The first game that I like to play in soccer island is called one, two, three, body part. So the idea here is you call out a number, one, two, three, four. You can go as high as you want and each number corresponds to a skill. You can also shout out a body part. So I'll say, all right guys, dribble, 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 and they'll all start moving around. And then I'll say, number one. I use number one typically as toe touches. And then we'll say elbow, and they'll have to put their elbow on the ball. Kids love this. They go crazy putting their back, their butt, their head onto the ball. You can even get kids to join in and have them shout out the body part. So you'll say, 
all right, Colin, what body part should we do? And he'll say leg or knee. Here's an example of some of the moves you could use that correspond to numbers and what I use. Now I want you guys all to remember that the youngest age groups might only get one or two of these. So you might just go with toe touches, boxes, and soul rolls, and you'll shout out one, two, or three. Then you'll go ahead and have a body part. The other thing that I like to do is add a sequence to goal. So as they're dribbling around, I'll say number one, number two, I'll say a body part. And then I might also say goal, 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 and they have to go shoot on goal. The next thing that I like to do in Soccer Island is play soccer freeze tag. This consists of the coach going around trying to tag the kids as they dribble with the ball inside Soccer Island. Now, if they get tagged, they have to take the ball and hold it in their hands above their head spread their legs out wide. The kids will try to unfreeze them by passing the ball in between their legs. When this happens, they are now unfrozen and can dribble again in Soccer Island. So here again, we're getting lots of touches on the ball. We're getting our head up. Where is the coach? Where is the tagger? We're moving around in a fun game. Now you can progress this to actually having the kids be the tagger. And they love that. They love having to go tag the, the other players. And again, it adds another element of fun to the game. The next thing that I like to do around Soccer Island is races, especially if you got a group that needs to get their energy out. Usually I'll start without the ball where they have to make two rounds around the island to see who wins. This is progressed to races with the ball and you have to really coach them not to take huge touches because they'll want to smash the ball to go forward, take small touches. And then I like to ask them, how do you change direction with the ball? How do we go around the circle with the ball? And again, the answer is the inside part of the foot. Another wrinkle to add here is that at the end of going around the circle twice, they have to shoot in a goal to end the race. For recreational practices, I always like to do some form of one against one. This is my favorite, where you have the four cones set up as shown. The players are lined up behind cones that are diagonal to each other. The coach is in the position noted here, usually kneeling with the balls at his hands. He then rolls the ball out into the middle of the pitch. The players have to go around their corresponding cones in front of them before going to the ball and then going one against one to any of the four goals that I have depicted here. Or if you just had two goals, they'd have, they could go to either goal. The coaching points here include using the inside or outside part of your foot to change direction, working on using a move like a pullback to get away from a defender, shielding, using your back to shield a player from the ball, as well as shooting with the inside part of the foot or the laces when finishing. You can progress this 1v1 into a 2v2, a 3v3, and it works the same. The coach rolls the ball into the middle, and if you have 2v2, the first two players in line have to go around their corresponding cones before they get into the middle and work two against two to one of the goals. This adds an element of having a teammate there, and sometimes they use that teammate and sometimes they don't, but now they're attacking together and defending together. So you're beginning to introduce the concept of not just one against one, but two against two or three against three. As I said at the start, kids love to score goals and they love to shoot. And definitely in my recreational sessions, I always have a fun shooting game. This is a game called Hot Shot. It's a pretty simple setup. The coach places one ball on a cone on one side of the field and the other players take their balls and try to shoot and hit the ball and knock it off the cone. If they do that, they're a hot shot. The coaching points here are trying to use either the inside part of the foot or their laces when striking the ball. The biggest thing we want to avoid here is toe balls. So I don't do a lot of organized small sided games at the recreational level. So maybe for the last five or 10 minutes, we'll do three against three or four against four. But what normally ends up happening in that situation is they get into a big clump and everybody goes for the ball. You know, at that age, they're really more individualized and, and self-centered. Uh, so it's, it's difficult for them to get outside that space. Now, 
if you have an especially talented group or you have a group that's a little bit more aware of the other players around them, then you could do it for maybe longer. But for the most part, I like the, the games, um, the fun shooting games, 1v1s, uh, individual skill stuff as part of my recreational sessions at the U5, U6, even U7 level. So in summary, guys, you would start off with some warm-up activators, which would be 10 to 15 minutes going back and forth to goal with a lot of soccer balls, really focusing on dribbling, shooting, having a good time, even putting up gates, going through those gates. We would then go to Soccer Island after 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, soccer Island is usually 20, 25 minutes, depending on how much you're going to do it and the different games that you're going to play, how many races you're going to do. After that, we would progress on to 1v1s, do that for maybe 10 minutes do the hot shot shooting game for five, maybe 10 minutes, and then end with a 3v3 or a 4v4. There are lots of themes and variations on these things, but in general, this is how I run a recreational session.